محمد رسول الله لا اله الا الله علي ولي Is it actually allowed in the religion of Islam to build shrines on top of graves? And when it comes to the visiting of graves, are we even allowed to go and visit graves? Or is it something that's shirk? Are there examples from the Quran, from the Ahl bayt from the life of the Prophet that they went to visit graves? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, I would like to offer my deepest condolences to the Imam of our time. Sahib al-Asr wa al-Zaman Allah ta'ala farajahu sharif on the on the very upsetting and sad occasion of the demolition of the shrines of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam and would like to also thank you for having me here visiting the graves of awliya or salihin or at least step a bit back going towards mm -hmm. Rasulullah, the prophets of Allah, or the progeny, would like to share um, the permissibility of that act mm -hmm. in the, from the Holy Quran, where in Surah Al-Nisa, verse number 64, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly, very mm -hmm. clearly, and you know, uh, in this verse, although some may, might come and say that this is specific to a certain event or a certain happening that happened but we know that the holy quran is not uh, in a whole context is not specific to one time and one area and one place mm. the holy eternal. quran is eternal so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy quran and i want my dear brothers and sisters says this is a very important discussion and the whole reason that you have gone all the way to different lengths to organize this program is to uh, allow our dear viewers, our brothers and sisters, wherever they are, wherever they are watching us, to get an in, in-depth in analysis of the importance of this event so they can be able to relate to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt and the oppression that is befalling or had befell on Ahlul Bayt in Baqi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa verse number 64 says وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا Now, what does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are certain individuals being human beings and the human beings are not fallible, are infallible. They are fallible. They make, they make mistakes. mistakes. So there are times that they make mistakes. They make sins. They commit sins. So where do you go? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Where do they go? They stay at home, no. recite the Quran? Because yeah. this is what the other schools of thought are saying. Mm. Go talk to Allah, pray, mm. fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Muslim, O mankind, O human being, when you commit a sin, you go towards those saints, those sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they wrong themselves, they come to you. And we say the whole Quran is not specific to the time of Rasulullah, it's specific to our time and will be there until eternally. That after the demise and the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in our days today, we are also able to go to the Holy Prophet when we commit sins. Ja'uka. When my Bani Adam wronged themselves, they go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Fastaghfarullah. And this is a, another answer to those who say that the Shia, they go and worship the graves of their Imams. No. The Quran is giving the answer, and this is our belief. We believe in this Quran. The scale is the Quran. The scale is the Quran. Fastaghfarullah, the whole reason that we go to Rasulullah, as the ayah says. Ja'uka fastaghfarullah. And then, because we are doing, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the holy person buried in this site. 
to do to accept our istighfar rasulullah also prays for us fastaghfar lahum ar rasul and then when rasulullah prays for you how does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala react la wajadu allah tawwaban rahima allah is all clement all merciful now this is a verse from the holy quran now we believe we believe that those awliya those servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are honorable individuals because you ask me is it permissible to visit the graves yes of these certain yes, individuals some now come forward and say you shouldn't even visit the actual grave just go past i know i'm sure you've been to hajj when you even go to rasulullah's grave and you want to stand for even one minute to read the ziyari do they say move 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 now i wanted to ask a question mm. that companion that was alive at the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and sacrificed everything he had to establish the religion of islam he engaged in battles mm. he went and faced the enemies of mm. islam sacrificed he he was martyred mm. while he was walking he was a sha'ira of allah right mm. he was a sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes no doubt he was some someone that once you look at him you it remember allah. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allah yes so what happens suddenly when he is killed and martyred and he's buried we suddenly have to forget he's not he's not a sign anymore apparently. he's not a sign of allah apparently. subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-hajj verse 32 what does he say and this is the the verse that we always recite in the holy month of muharram dalika wa ma yu'azzam sha'ir allah brings taqwa fa innaha min taqwa al-qulub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these individuals once they were walking on the back of this uh, land and they were serving me serving the holy prophet establishing islam establishing good deeds they were a sha'ira they were a sign of mine then why is it that suddenly when they are killed and martyred everyone has to just suddenly forget about them and move on and what greater signs than the ahlul bayt and what greater salam. signs than ahlul bayt the greatest and this is from the holy quran mm. Now, now that is about visiting the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala in Surah An-Nisa says, yes. "Ja okay." So about the building of now the shrines, we the actual are the building because now they say okay, because you know again this this debate or this uh, this 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 topic is not on one level yeah. because the first level, of course, uh, and of course we can do ho many shows just from the Quran as well as many hadiths from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so many times as well uh, Sheikh Ali mentioned in the first part him visiting Jannah al Baqi al Gharqad but now the second level the the building of the shrines and uh, his Eminence Sheikh Muhammad touched upon this but from the Quran do we have also proof on the building of shrines on this yeah. But historically, let me take everyone back a little bit. Of course. Just outside the, the context and the time zone of Islam. Yes, please. If you go to Jerusalem, mm. how many prophets are buried there? Many. You have Prophet Dawood. Mm. You have Prophet Ibrahim, oh. Ishaq, Yaqub, Yusuf. Buried, yes, yes. Buried. Yeah. Now, what happened at the time of the Islamic Empire? They went all the way to Jerusalem to yes, they have. to open. Yes, they opened to take it they out yes. of. Yeah. Did they demolish the burial sites of the no prophets? One them. They were there at the time of Rasulullah. Did Rasulullah send an army to demolish it? No. He is a prophet, mm. and he is a representative of Allah, and he is the seal of prophets. Mm. So, why did Rasulullah send all of those companions? Because this is shirk, and Rasulullah has got an obligation, a duty, yes, to, to guide people them. towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why didn't Rasulullah send people to demolish the burial site of Prophet Dawood? Mm. If you say, okay, Rasulullah at that time he wasn't instructed to do that, as you might say, after Rasulullah. The, the more, first, the second. The more who instructed you to? The first. And where did you get your instructions? The second, he went all the way to Jerusalem. As narrations say, mm. the books of history. Yes. Amr ibn al-Khattab, he went to Jerusalem. Right, he he saw it in front of him. Mm. 
Did he demolish it? We go to the Holy Quran again. Surah Al-Kahf. Verse number 21. Mm. Amrahum. There is a dispute. Between. There is an argument. Mm. Now they come to the cave. They see there's a group of young men lying there. They're in dispute. What shall we do? Rabbuhum a'lamu bihim. Some of some said, let's wait. Allah might show us a sign. Qala al-ladheena ghalabu ala amrihim. There was a group of, of them who the, were the majority and they had the best, the wisest of, of statements. Qala al-ladheena ghalabu ala amrihim lanatakhidhanna alayhim masjida. We're going to now build a masjid. Is this the time, at the time of Rasulullah? No, people of the this cave. is the people of the Ashab al mm. the companions before, of the cave. They said, let's build a masjid on top of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses uh, the, the names of uh, other religious sites, which is allocated to Christians, Ahsan, to Jews, yes, to yes, others. Yes, Why did he say masjid in this specific, in this specific manner? Mm. Masjid. Place where you do sujood, you do sujood for Allah. This is also important. The ones that actually were, uh, they chose their decision. Yeah, was to, what, yeah. What, was, what was taken? Yeah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that I went with the decision of those who said, "Let's build a mosque." Yeah. If there's any, if there's anything wrong with it, Allah should say in the following verse, or, "This is something that's wrong." And then. Example. Is let's construct a site on top alayhim. It's not next to them or further away. Alayhim. They are bad. They are no, no clearer verse. This is the Holy Quran. There are some who come and say that the Shia believe in a different, totally different no, Quran. Same one, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Go back to Surah Al Kahf, verse number 21. You will find clear indication that Allah says there is Quranically no problem with people building and constructing shrines on top of burial sites.